Okay, hi everyone. Uh, now we need to continue our lesson. Uh. That's a 2.4. So everyone, uh, 2.4, sorry, that's a 2.7. So everyone, you take out the 2.7. I think I already upload in the Telegram. Then okay, hopefully you can print out. Then we have refer now. Okay, now we're going to see the 2.7. The topic for 2.7 is an impulse and also impulsive force. So we're talking two things. Okay, first one, we're going to see the introduction. The introduction, first one, they're talking about the definition and also SI unit for the impulse. So everything we need to definition first. Because every time the question, they will ask what's the definition of the impulse or they ask what's the unit. So from here, we're starting with the definition. So the definition, actually, there's a change of momentum. That's another meaning of the momentum. The unit also the same one. They just want to change it, become change of the mean impulse they got related with the initial and also final velocity. Now you see the formula. Impulse equal M bracket V minus U. Impulse don't have any symbol. They just write impulse. They are then mass. Mass is an object mass. Then the V minus U. V is the final velocity. U is the initial velocity. Okay, after that the unit, we just follow the momentum. So if the question asks, impulse unit same like this one physical quantity, your answer is momentum. Okay, the unit should be the same. Kg and S91. So another unit we also can write as a Newton second. Okay, later we see why we're using the Newton second. Okay, after that we're going to see from the Newton second law. Remember Newton second law, F equal MA. So F equal MA. So from here A. The A I want to convert become the formula. So I find it F equal M. V minus U over T. So this one is an A formula. Now I want to combine M bracket V minus U. The T I want to bring another side. So you from here you can see F T equal M after that bracket V minus U. So T is bring here already. So I find it. This one actually is what? This one actually is an impulse. So from here I can say impulse also can equal to the F T. So another formula for the impulse lah. So from here, that's why I said just now the unit for the impulse they can write in Newton second. There's a from this one formula. F, there's a force. So we write the Newton. T is a time taken. So Newton second also is a, another unit for the impulse. When the question, they never provide any velocity. The question just gives you the time and also the force. So we can apply this formula to find the impulse. So from here, F. Actually, the full name, we call it impulsive force. Okay, impulsive force also is one type of the force, but we cannot count as a negative. Because impulsive force, just like the injured, the pain. When you feel very pain, means the impulsive force is too high. So pain, you cannot say about the negative. So when you get the answer is a negative, when the question asks what is the impulsive force, you also need to convert the negative, become the positive. Because impulsive force just talking about the force acting to your body or acting to the car. If acting to the car, you put negative, then you must say the force acting to the car in opposite direction. If acting to you, you feel pain, and you cannot say opposite direction acting to your body. You just say the impulsive force is positive because there will pain. Okay? There's a one type of the force uh, when you collision or when you hit to something. That's an impulsive force. Okay, T stands for time impact. When you crash together, then the time taken when you crash, that one we call time impact. Okay, so from here you can see the diagram. They will show you the one person they got long jump. Okay, when the long jump, can you see the up after that they before they're landing? Can you see the leg is bending? Okay, when the leg is bending, actually they will ask why the athlete they want to bend the leg before they're landing. Okay, I can show you the diagram, you can see every post before the landing same like the diagram here okay so that one is uh at least when the landing they bend the knee okay this one is a one of the action i want to explain about the impulsive force okay before we go that action we're talking about the impulse first. impulsive force is later Okay, so from here, I introduced already the FT. After that, I want to say about the graph. Lah. You see the graph. Now the graph is a force. Impulsive force versus the time. Then they ask you, please find the impulse from this one graph. Okay, 
from the graph actually we got two things we can find it one is a gradient another one is the area under the graph so from your notes they right you want to find impulse you need to find area under the graph so we try to find area under the graph okay this is the area under the graph if i using the formula for area half multiply with the f and also multiply with the t so i get it f t actually is a impulse so that means from this one graph, you want to find impulse, you need to find area under the graph. Okay? So this one is what I want to introduce about the uh, impulse. Then we got two, uh, three example questions for the impulse. Let's we do together. Come, let me see the example one. An object of the mass is 5 kg, that fall from the building. Its velocity is a 6 before it touches to the ground. How much is the impulse of the object when it's hit to the ground? So from here, actually the question, they ask hit to the ground, actually there's a zero velocity, is it? So from this one question, you ignore the zero, is okay. Because you want to find the impulse. If you put negative, you need to explain. Why got negative? Because final, the object is slowed down. So you get deceleration. Okay, if you do want to explain when the hit to the ground, it's okay. Because the question never said there's zero. They never mentioned say, oh, now it's a zero. So we can straightforward to write your answer. Impulse. Okay. If you want safe, so we add negative, then we go to explain. So now formula is a M V minus U over T R. Ah, no over T. Just like this only. This one is an impulse. So from here they say uh, the impulse of the object hit to the ground. So we just write M is five kilograms. Okay, V is final is 0, minus 6. So final answer I get 30. Okay, object. Slow down. The object will slow down as a heat on the ground. This one is the first answer. Then we go to the second question. Okay, they show you the trolley. The trolley moves with the 5 ms negative 1. Okay, the mass is 1.5 kilograms. Okay, when they move, okay, heat to the wall. Then pound just back. That means move in opposite direction. So that means this one question is not about the deceleration. They're talking about opposite direction. So understood, you need to put negative, huh? Okay, now they punch us back with the velocity 4. Now the question they want to find what is the, how can the magnitude, okay, magnitude of the impulse, uh, impulse during the collision. Magnitude, they want the value. Okay, so we do the two method. We do the first one. Okay, first one, the trolley is go there, 5. Okay, I take this one as a positive Okay, this one will come back into 4. I take this one as a negative. <coughs> so I'm using the formula for the impulse. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now we're going to see the mass 1.5. Okay, final velocity so should be the final, yes or no? So we take that to 4. Okay. Then minus, remember the formula, formula is minus, so you put minus. Okay. <coughs> then your U is positive 5. Then you find the answer, 1.5. Okay, this one become negative 9. Because this one negative, then this one negative plus, become negative. So the final answer, we get it, that's a 30.5. Kg and S, negative 1. So when you get the negative, you need to explain why you get the negative. Because the final object is moved in opposite direction. Then we're using the second method to solve this one question. Okay, second method, I just reverse, reverse the direction. Okay, I assume uh, opposite. I take this one as a negative. I take this one as a positive. It's the same thing. We do the same thing. Okay, mass 1.5, 
V minus U. This one showing is a V. We cannot change our D. So there's a positive 4. Okay. Minus. We still follow formula. Minus. Okay. Then you got 1 negative 5. Okay. So this one is another method. So 1.5 you are now multiply with the 9. No positive. Ah, no negative. We just ignore the negative already. Okay. Final answer still the same. 1.3, uh, 13.5 kg and S. So for this one answer, you don't need to explain. You need to get positive one. Okay. So this one is two method also the right answer. Just a negative you need to explain. Why got negative? Okay. Finally, the trolley move in opposite direction. That's all. So this one two method also correct. Make sure your unit you can write correct. Kg and S is one. Then we go to third question. Okay, third question. We read first. Above with the 2 kg, they pull with the force 40 newton for 5 seconds. So this one question totally never mentioned the velocity. So when the question never mentioned velocity, we need to find another method to solve the impulse. So another method means the formula impulse now is a force multiplied with the time. So we just apply in form, uh, impulse equal FT. Okay, impulse equal FT. Now we write impulse equal FT. Okay, so we just straight apply 40. 40 Newton. Then times 5 seconds. So I get it. The answer is 200. Okay, the unit. You can write Newton second. You also can write about kg and S. Still the same. Never mind. You apply different formula, the unit still can put the another formula unit. Okay? There's the same unit for the impulse. Okay, so we just finish the impulse. Lah. Okay, yeah, everybody understand what's the impulse. Lah. They just change off the momentum. Then the second one I need to introduce is an impulsive force. There's a, another type of the force. Hi everyone, now we continue with the impulsive force. Okay, let's see the impulsive force. Okay, from there we need to know the same lah, definition and also what's the SI unit. Okay, so from here you see the note from the from this way. You can see about the impulsive force. There's a large force which is acting over a short time in the world. So that means as the time become very short the impulsive force they will produce very high. So this one is a relationship between the impulsive force and also the time taken. Okay, now we're going to see the definition. So impulsive force got related with the time. So sure the definition must mention about the time. Okay, let's see here impulsive force is a rate of change. Remember the word rate of, rate of means the formula must over the time. So from here we find it rate of change of momentum. So when momentum is at the top, then the bottom sure is the time taken. Now the formula becomes like this. Impulsive force equal rate of change of momentum. Up is a momentum. You also can say up is an impulse. So from here the definition you can say rate of change of momentum or you say rate of impulse. No need change. Because change of momentum already is an impulse. So rate of impulse. Or you say rate of change of momentum. There was also definition for impulsive force. Okay, now, when you see the formula T and F, okay, when impulse become constant, this one is to what's the relationship? The relationship when your F become increasing, okay, the force become very high. The time taken is very short. Okay, refer just now the long jump. Can you see the athlete, they bend the knee. I asked why they bend the knee. When they bend the knee, they will take some time to bend, is it? Then after that, when they just land, they take longer time to land. So when they take longer time to land, what do you think about the force? The force must be less. If I don't want to bend the knee, I straightforward jump, then land. So what you find it? Your leg will be very pain. Maybe it will be broken. We don't know because the impulsive force is too high. Don't say about the long jump for the parachute. Parachute, when it just landing on the ground, they show you bend. You automatically, you got the refraction. 
you bend your knee. Okay? And you can bend your knee after that you go to like you never straight forward go down. So straight forward go down that means the time taken too fast, too short already. So after that you get the impulsive force is too high on where on your leg. So the force acting to your leg maybe they will broke. So this one is a reason why you need to bend your knee. Okay? So this one is a one example related force and also the time. Time taken too short the impulsive force will become very very big. Okay, now you can see the unit. Force, everyone you know the unit should be the Newton or you can write kg ms negative 2. It was uh, another unit for the force. Lah. Okay, then we can refer to the uh, the graph. You can refer to the graph. Okay, the graph is uh, another page. <coughs> now the graph is an impulse versus time. Just now it's an impulsive force. Now it's an impulse versus time. So impulse versus time, they can ask you how to find impulsive force. Okay, when you want to find impulsive force from the graph, so we got two methods. Lah. One, we find gradient, either you find area under the graph. So now we're going to see this one graph. Okay, this one is the first point, this one is the last point. So that means we want to find gradient. Okay, if you find gradient, means you take the formula y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So I find gradient. Actually, this one graph, the gradient is an impulsive force. How we prove? So I prove for you. Gradient equal y1 minus y2. Y is what? Impulse. So I take impulse over x1 minus x2. X, the unit, is a time taken. There's a second. So from here, I get a formula. It's an impulse over the time. So impulse over the time, exactly same like the impulsive force formula. Impulse over the time. So now, this one graph, the gradient become impulsive force. Okay, so the question, sometimes they will give you some information, you do the calculation. Some question, they show you the graph. They call you to find the impulsive force or you find the impulse. So make sure you know how to see the graph and how to find out the answer. Okay, so this one is uh, impulsive force. Okay, then we got two, form uh, two example questions. There's a four and also the five. Okay, you can try to do first. Okay, now we go and see the example four. They got tennis ball. The mass is 100 gram. It's moving a velocity of 40 ms than one. So 40 means there's an initial velocity. A player hit the ball and move in the opposite direction. So when starting, the ball is go to right. Okay, when the pouch is back, they go to the left. Okay, velocity become 10. So either one sure is a negative direction. So how much is the impulsive force experienced by the ball if the time they're given is 20 milliseconds? Okay, so make sure you go to understand all the unit. All the units must change become SI unit. Okay, now I draw the diagram for you. Okay, first one the ball go to right hand side, then the ball hit, then come back. So if I do want the answer go negative, I need to do something. So I take the final, this is a final, is it? I take the final direction, always positive. Always positive. So my final answer sure is a positive. Okay, remember this term. Final and initial, you cannot change. Which one final, which one initial is a fix. But direction, up to you. So I take the final as a positive direction, then the initial as a negative direction is okay. So I just write here. This one is positive, this one is a negative. So the question want to find impulsive force. So we apply the formula first, and V minus U over T. So F equal mass. Okay, mass is 100 gram. Please convert to kilogram. So it becomes 0 by 1. Okay, final is this one. V is 10. So I take the 10 is a positive. So I put 10. Okay, remember, minus... Okay, U is a negative direction, negative 4, 14. Ah, okay, can you see like this? So final answer should is a positive. Time taken is 2 millisecond. Milli, help me to convert milli to second. So that's a 2 times 10 power of negative 3. Okay, divide by thousand. Okay, after that I find it, the answer become positive 
So this one is my answer. Okay, I just ignore the negative. So that's why I want to put the final velocity become positive direction. So my final answer sure is a positive. Okay, so this is example four. Then we need to go is example five. Okay, we understand example five first. A boy of the mass is fifty gram, fifty kilogram. They fall a height place. Okay, they have to get to the ground. Okay, the velocity of the boy when they just touch the ground is 4 ms in the green one. Okay, so that means 4. 4 means never using any force, is it? Okay, never using any initial velocity, is it? So when something is free fall, we drop. We're just talking about initial velocity is a 0. Final, that means before hit to the ground is a 4. Okay, so from here, the impulsive force acting to the boy, if the boy bang his knee, land to the ground, become 0 0.5, then stop. Okay, then stop. Okay, then after that, another one, they say they land on the ground with stiff leg and take 0 0.02 to stop. So you see, one is a 0 0.5 and another one is 0 0.02 second. So the time is too short, then you go to stop. Now you need to find out. The impulsive force, how big different. Okay, we do one by one. Okay, follow this one question. They say stop. Okay, finally the object is stop. So from here, actually, we can ignore the negative. Why? Because this one is injured, acting to the leg. We cannot say of a negative. Why? Because slow down. Okay, acting to the leg, that means the force we never talking about got negative. So we just ignore the zero. For the final velocity, we just take 4 only. So we find the A first. A, the impulsive force. So you get the answer become 400 Newton. Acting to the leg. If I bend the knee. Okay, then we go to apply the B. Okay, everything also never change. Just change about the time taken. This one is 0 0.02. So you get the answer is 10,000 meters. Can you see the big difference? So I just bend the knee. Okay, so I make it become longer 0 0.5 second. Then if I never bend the knee, I straight forward go to land. So you find it. 10,000 newton were acting to your leg. Then what happened for your leg? This one 400. You see how many times they beat the bigger than the force acting to your leg. So this one is although the time taken changes a little bit, then you see the big changes for the force acting to the uh, at least for the leg. Okay. So this one is uh, another comparison. What's the relationship in positive force and also the time taken? Okay. Inversely proportional. Okay, then the following, they got effect of the time interval of the impact of the size of the impulsive force. So from here, they just want to mention the keyword in inversely proportional. Okay, inversely proportional between F and also the time taken. Okay, then the following, that's a reducing of the impulsive force and also the uh, one is a benefit. Another one is a disadvantageous. Some situation we need the impulsive force become higher. They can help we all do something. Okay, another one we want to reducing. Okay, reducing because we don't want the injured. So from here, I will show you some of the diagram here you can refer. Okay, let's see the first one. The first one is uh, the athlete. Lah. The athlete they want to jump. The gymnast bend her knee. Okay, as she land. The moment change the occur over the long period of time and show the impulsive force become lower. When the landing, the time taken to land is longer. So that's why they never break her leg. That means they reduce the impulsive force. Okay, then we go and see the second one. The second one is a game in the baseball. Okay, baseball. You see the cricket and the softball. 
Okay, the catcher always they pull the handle backwards before they want to catch. Okay, why they want to pull the handle backwards for what? You want to make the time become longer. When you move your handle behind, you find it the time taken collision between the ball and the glove take longer time. When they take longer time means they reduce the impulsive force. Okay, for the third one is a high jump. Okay, for the high jump, normally they put the thick mattress on the floor. Okay, why? Thick mattress are more they need to soft surface. Soft surface means when the athlete they're just landing. When they're just landing, the thick mattress and soft surface they will compress together when the athlete falling on the mattress. When they just compress, that means the time taken to compress the sponge. That means they want the time become longer. When the time become longer means they can reduce the impulsive force. So this one is another uh, advantage why we want to make the time become longer. Number four, this one situation is the uh, car testing. Car testing when they just collision what happened. So for this one situation, we want to make the impulsive force become low as low we can do it. So what we can do, we need to change the material or we use some material that can crumble. Crumble that means they can came it. Came it, then take longer time. For example, here they got explain collision. Causes the car to stop and also the experience, the change in momentum. Okay, change in the momentum. So the crumble zone of the car extends the impact time. So that means when you crash, the in front one, the bonnet, they want made by the crumble zone. Crumble zone, that means they will squeak together. So when they squeak together means they take some time. When they take some time means the impulsive force they can reduce. Okay, take some time, impulsive force reduce. So that means the driver, they will reduce the engine. Okay, because the impulsive force become less. So everyone understand uh, the what is uh, some example for how to reducing the impulsive force. Okay, now we go and see the another part. That means there's a benefit. Why we need the impulsive force? Can okay, please refer the diagram I show you. Okay, the first one is a hammer, hammer and a nail. Okay, normally you want the nail faster to penetrate to the wood. What do you need to do? You need to hit faster. When you hit faster, you find the time contact become short. When it becomes short, the impulsive force becomes very high. So now you're finding the nail faster go in the wood, uh, the, the force becomes strong. So they will faster to go in. So if a hit becomes slow, what do you think about that? You hit becomes slow, mean the force becomes less. So the time taken let the nail to go in must be longer. So this one is why we need the impulsive force become high. Okay, let's see the second one. The second one is the pestle and also the mortar. Okay, this one they want to crunch the chili, crunch the food. So normally we using high speed, is it? When you crunch something. Okay, when you high speed, mean the velocity is high, then the time taken is short. So when the time taken becomes short, also impulsive force becomes higher. So you faster, faster to crunch the chili becomes small pieces. Okay, the third one. The third one is a exponent for the karate, or you say the taekwondo. Okay, no, normally they're going to hit the wood, is it? Okay, when they hit the wood, okay, when the hand just hit the wood or some leg, you're going to kick the wood. Normally, the time contact must be very short. Okay, they just hit, after that, then they stop. So, very fast means the impulsive force is very high. So, you faster and make the wood become break. If I slowly I put my hand slowly and hit on the wood, you fight it, the wood is never break and your hand is very pain. Uh, that one is cannot produce an impulsive force become high. Okay? You do something, you want to produce impulsive force become high, your time to contact must be very fast. And the last one is follow through. Let's see the diagram. Okay. The football player, they go to make the put the leg go behind first they got reaction reaction they mean go backwards then after that they go to strong to kick the ball 
and they strong to keep the ball means this one the, the action we call it follow through action so the follow through action after the strong kick they produce the larger impulse understood larger impulse means larger impulsive force so they go backward then they follow through the strong to kick the ball so as a result the light shape is momentum and produce a high velocity so this one situation they're never talking about the time taken they just want talking about impulse and also impulsive force okay now i show you impulse impulsive force what's the relationship when the time is constant so not constant like when the time taken we never count too much so impulsive force and the impulse Okay, the time taken is the same. We never change this any time taken. So when the impulse increases, the force also impulse also increase. So from here, follow through action. Follow through action. The meaning same like the impulse. So that means changes of the momentum. The leg they go behind. Go behind is a negative. Then they come in front. That's a positive. That means mass v minus u. That one is the impulse. So you find it. They move with the high impulse. So finally, the ball move in the high velocity. So that one is a another uh, benefit. We using high impulsive force. Okay, then the following is a safety safety for the vehicle. Okay, you can refer here. I got mentioned one until seven about the vehicle. What's the safety by? Reduce the impulsive force. Some talking impulsive force. Some talking about safety. Some talking about the inertia. I show. Sorry, I show you the big diagram. The big diagram I already labeled one, two, three, four. So you refer the one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to explain. Okay, let's see the number. Uh, com how number zone. Number zone is a number four. Okay, front cumber zone and rear cumber zone should be the same. Huh? So we explain the cumber zone by using impulsive force. Okay, let's see the explanation. In a crash, the bonnet and boot of the car is designed cumber, making the collision last a slightly longer time. So the meaning is slightly longer time means the impulsive force becomes short, becomes short lah, becomes smaller. Impulsive force becomes smaller, the time taken is longer. So that's why they create the border in front and behind become the crumble zone. Okay, the number two is the strong steel structure and framework of the car. Okay, strong steel structure, they're talking about the side. Okay, you can see about the diagram. That's a seven. Seven is a side impact bar. Okay, the side impact bar that will cover the passenger and also the driver. Okay, there's an inside, you cannot see one. There's a door, one door is outside, door is a soft one. But inside, you got one steel structure. This one is for safety. Okay, now you see the explanation. The strong steel structure, they want to prevent collapse of the front and also back of the car into the passenger component. That means your car surrounded also with one. This one stay. Outside, although it's cumbersome, but inside, you got stay. Still, what's the function? They want to cover the passenger, okay, and also the driver. Okay, number three also is a safety. Number three is a windscreen, windscreen, okay, windscreen glass for the car. Okay, they're using what type of the glass? They're never using the normal one. Normal one in the house use one. That one is a normal glass. This one we call shutterproof windscreen glass. Okay, what means of the shutterproof? Shutterproof windscreen means they want to prevent the passenger from injured by the glass pieces during the accident. Okay, in your house, the glass normally you use one is a normal glass. When it just spoil, what happened? Okay, when it just spoil, you find it becomes small pieces, very very small pieces after they fall down, and that one is very injured. Because when they injured your leg, injured your face, injured your hand, and that they're very dangerous. So shutter pro means what? Their whole screen, they just scrap, scratches, scratches like this only. When they just boil, they never pow all come down. No. They just go crack. Crack. 
Okay, after the crack, they will stick together. They never straight forward to come down. You want to make the screen to come down, you need to using something to hit. Uh, to hit the screen, then the screen will fall down. And uh, that one we call shutter proof. They never make the glass become small pieces. Okay, understand that? Eh? Okay, then we continue to see the number four. Okay, from your diagram, from your diagram, they show there's an airbag. There's a two. Label by two. Okay, automatic airbag. They're talking about impulsive force. As a driver, they launch forward into the airbag. Then allowing the driver to slow in the longer time. So that means your emergency brake or your accident, you find the airbag to come out from the steering. Okay, when it just come out, they take some time. Then after that, the driver will hit on the airbag. When they hit on the airbag, means they take some time to hit on the airbag. Reduce the impulsive force. So the injured can be minimized for the driver and also the passenger. So this one is a function for the airbag, talking about impulsive force. Okay, the next one should be the seat belt. Seat belt is number 8. In your diagram, that's a number 8. Seat belt is talking about the inertia. Remember inertia? Inertia is talking about uh, you don't want to move. Suddenly, something will force you to move. Okay? The one is the inertia. So, the driver is not brought, stop immediately. Uh, this one also same. Immediately stop. Accident. Immediately, you want to break. So, all of you in the car must launch forward. Okay, so now you got safety belt. Safety belt is prevent you go to forward more. They will hold you back. So prevent you go to hit the touchboard, hit on the cushion, hit somewhere in the car in the car. So that's why it's a function of the seatbelt related with the uh, inertia. Okay, the next one is uh, ABS. We go and find the ABS as a number six. And ABS is talking about anti-lock brake system. Okay, they're talking about the brake. Okay, they say ABS, they will immediately stop. When you just press your brake, they will immediately to stop. Then after that, the car will not momentarily brought to the rest so that the impulsive force is smaller. That means you brake. You immediately you go to brake, the car will brake stop immediately. They never make the car to spin. Okay, the car will spin. They cannot stop immediately, that means they go to spin. But now, if you're using the NBS, they never lock the car. They can immediately stop. They want to call function for NBS. Okay, and the last one is a headrest. Headrest in the diagram is number one. Get headrest and also the touch box. Okay, the seat is better and also the headrest reduce the risk of the passenger neck being damaged rear end of the collision. This one is talking about inertia. Okay, the headrest. Actually, they want to cover your neck. So this one is talking about the car suddenly they want to move very fast. When they move very fast, that means you will go backwards. If you don't have any headrest, that means your your neck when you move to backward, then after that they will crack. You also can be injured your neck. So from here, the headrest they want to cover cover and also as a cushion to to make you comfortable when the car suddenly to move forward then you launch to backwards so they will cover your neck prevent your neck become injured so this one is an inertia another one they say the touch spot touch spot is in front there in front of the car there okay the driver and also the beside the passenger normally the touch spot is a soft material this one also want to prevent when you want to hit on the touch spot the touch board must be made with the soft material so when you just hit, you can reduce the impulsive force you know the time taken material is a soft, that means the, the impulsive force becomes smaller the time taken longer when you hit to the touch board okay, so this whole thing one until the eight the related with the safety for the car design related with the impulsive force and also the inertia or you can refer the diagram huh? 
So from here at the bottom, I will explain and highlight something that's important. So some is related inertia, some is related with the impulsive force, some just for safety. Then you make sure how safety. Example for the windscreen, there's a shutter proof. Okay, after that we got from bumper. From bumper also is a soft material. From here you can ignore the impulsive force. There are so many impulsive force already. You cannot explain together. So you can say about absorb the shock. When you just hit the absorb the shock from the accident. Okay, another safety. There's an ABS. ABS can stop immediately. They want is another safety. Then another one is a side impact bar, the strong steel. And they want also want to prevent, want to protect the passenger from injury. Okay, this three is uh, another explanation. Okay, so I finished my topic already. There's a lesson 2.7. Then we can go through the tutorial now. Okay, you can refer the tutorial first before I show you the answer. So make sure you got do your tutorial question. I will show you the answer soon. Okay, thank you for your cooperation. Uh, thank you for watching about the 2.7 lesson. Thank you very much.